in today? Well, I'm in something special, if you can probably tell. This is a 2017 911 Targa. A Targa, what is a Targa and why does it make it special? Well, it's in its party trick. What's its party trick? I like this, this to me is safe. If we roll over, I know nowadays we got tech and the headrest will explode and all that sort of stuff, you'll be protected, but this is more my thing. I Not only that, I love the look of it. I really like the silver stripe that they kept on the newer version of the Targa. The older Targa had this metal stripe on it, and that metal strip, that was like a safety feature. And that's why, part of the reason why Porsche uh, copyrighted the name Targa, uh, because they really wanted to make it a, a, a different vehicle wholeheartedly from a convertible top roadster. Remember, their roadster killed one of the most famous people in the world, James Dean. And that was a, a roadster style vehicle with no roof, and basically it kind of looked like a like a bar of soap going down the road with a windscreen on it. Well, this is a little bit different, and Targa was it was one of those vehicles or one of those design ideas that was going to take away the fear of ownership of, a, of an open-top vehicle. Well, it started to rain, so i got to put the top up, unfortunately, but I guess that's the nice part about having a Targa, is you can have a few cars in one. I'm just going to put my four-ways on and put the top up. It only takes a few seconds. And this weather's going to go away, but I get to put my top up and... Unlike my Corvette, I don't have to get out of the vehicle to do it. So this Targa is actually an automated top, which is, well, pretty cool. I mean, I don't even want to give this back. Sorry, Pat, you might not get this car back. <laughs> oh, it's what a lovely car to drive. But what's kind of interesting about this vehicle being a 2017, I have driven the 2020s. It's a little bit more analog, and I've got to say, I kind of like it. I kind of like a bit of an analog sports car. And this car, it's not really analog. It's got a plenty of tech. I mean, the uh, the transmission, the the Gazoon type, as I like to call it, but the Porsche Doppelkopplan is is one of those transmissions that's really, I mean, well, listen to it. That's the engine, not the transmission, but what the transmission does to help you enjoy this car to the fullest is, well, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome. I can see why the PDK is one of those transmissions that, you know, a lot of Porsche buyers get. And for the person who maybe has never driven a manual transmission car, particularly if you were born sometime after the 90s or something like that, you probably don't even know how to drive a manual transmission. Not to mention the fact that so many cars that today, sports cars, have so much power. You really don't know what you're doing with the third pedal and the clutch and engagement and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, chances are you're going to be replacing the clutch or perhaps putting your car off the road. Unfortunately, you might be in it as well, and that's not a good thing. A little bit of history. The word Targa, where does it come from? Well, it's actually Italian. It's an Italian word for plate, but don't think about a dinner plate. That's piatto, actually. A Targa is more of a tag. Think license plate. Plate, sort of a, a fitment of some kind. Well, that's what the roof is. The roof is a Targa. It's a plate that goes on top of the car, rather than a convertible. Why do we have Targas? We have Targas for a number of different reasons. Because as soon as you take the roof off of the vehicle and turn it into a convertible, the whole body loses its structure. The other problem, you flip over a car. Well, if you flip over a car with a roof, hopefully you're safe. If you flip over a convertible, and it's the 19s, 10s, 20s, and 30s, you're probably dead. Uh, if you're lucky though, you probably didn't have seatbelts and you were thrown from the vehicle. That's why cars didn't have seatbelts way back when. So, in the period of time in the, we'll say, maybe 40s, 50s and so on, sports cars, everyone loved a good convertible, but you couldn't make that convertible too powerful. And also, people knew that if you went racing with that convertible, you could very easily die. So, you end up with something called a Targa. And a Targa, having a plate at the top, allows for a roll bar. And that's why in the older 911 Targas, you'll see that kind of silver stripe that goes across the top. But they put that silver stripe on the car to remind the customer this is a safe vehicle. In fact, Porsche was so proud of that that they went and copyrighted the name Targa. But Targa is much like a convertible, much like a coupe. Those are body styles. 
Unfortunately though, the word Targa is not usually found in search criteria when you're searching a pre-owned vehicle online. Because, well, actually that's a really great question. I don't really know why. But I think it's because so few vehicles are Targas. And some people have maybe even heard of races called Targa whatever. One of the oldest was called the Targa Florio. It was started by a, um, a wealthy guy who loved his cars and he wanted to do racing. This is going back to 1908 when the cars looked like carriages. And that particular guy, Vincenzo Florio, he liked to race cars. He liked it to go fast. And he got all of his friends and they went to Southern Italy and they drove for 277 miles in a race to win the Targa Florio. But why did they call it the Targa? Florio. Florio was his last name, so he named the race after himself because, you know, well, he's really modest. But what does the tar what's the Targa for? Well, it was the plate on the vehicle. You gotta remember, it's 1908. There were no racetracks. In fact, there were barely any cars, really, when you think about it. So what else did you get out of that? Well, you had to put a plate on the vehicle, which in North America we'd probably refer to as a gumball or a gumball rally. When you don't have a race track, how do you race all together on, on streets and roads? Well, you do it one at a time and you basically time the event as people take off. And how do you know which car is which? Well, you put a number on the car and then you log when they leave and arrive at each stage. Hence the name Targa. The new 911 version is pretty slick. I mean, really, if you look at it, it's kind of engineering poetry as it runs. You look at that big clamshell come apart, it looks like the car is turning into a transformer, or transforming, so to speak, because so much of the actual vehicle itself is moving. I mean, I can look at the thing go up and down all day long. I just think it's phenomenal. And what you end up with is this really, really sturdy car. But I actually, again, I'm not one for convertible, so I'd much rather have a Targa. If you're not sold on the idea of a Targa, ride in the Targa with the windows up. Right up to highway speed, not much going on in here. Uh, I could do that all day long. It's just got such a nice sound. You can hear the turbo spooling up. Oh, what a great sound. Well, what else do you get in a 911 Targa? Well, you get a little switch sometimes on the steering wheel. That little switch on the steering wheel, if I change it around, all of a sudden, get a little bit more power, a little bit more agility. The steering wheel tightens up a little bit. The suspension tightens up a little bit. It's a little bit quicker to downshift. Ugh, it's so much fun and the feel of a 911. It's just always something a little bit special. It's a little bit different than than a lot of sports cars out there because the engine is in the wrong place. It's at the back. You ever watch Knight Rider as a kid? I know I did, now I'm dating myself. But Knight Rider, the Knight Industries 2000, yeah, I remember, it actually had a button on the dash called Turbo Boost. Well, this car actually kind of has the same button. You can kind of call it a hooligan button. And it's right on this little wheel. And when you press it, what it does is it automatically gives you an additional boost of hyperactivity from the car. It's it's really quite phenomenal. So right now I have it in S plus mode. I'm gonna turn it back down to just regular mode. You can hear the engine kind of comes down a little bit. Everybody starts to relax. But then, when you feel like an espresso, all you gotta do is push this little button and that's what you get. For about 20 seconds. It really is spectacular. I, I really got to say, and, and I really got to thank my buddy uh, Pat over at uh, Humberview Motorsports. He, uh, he loaned me the car today, and he said, on a day like today, I think I got to give you something with the top that goes down. And I'm like, Pat, I've seen your showroom. Whatever you got, I'm pretty happy with. And, uh, and yeah, if you ever have the chance, do go to the website. But uh, why not take a walk into the showroom? You know, I've had a few people ask me, hey, do you ever try the launch control on the vehicles? When cars have all kinds of technology, and especially a 911 like this one, you really don't need launch control. I'm just gonna hit the throttle. I'm in regular mode. I'm not in Sport Plus. I'm just gonna hit the gas pedal and go. And that's the limit of the street. Come together. 